Thank you, friends, for attending tonight's meeting of the Westerville City Schools Board of Education. The agenda will be displayed up on the screens in the front of the room. You may also follow along by connecting to the district's website, wcsoh.org, and click on the district link, select Board of Education, then Board Docs Agenda, then select this evening's meeting. There will be tonight two opportunities to address the board. The first being agenda item 6.01. The first set of public comments is relative to agenda items 7.01, 11.07. Please state the agenda item or items that you are referencing at the beginning of your comments. The second opportunity is agenda item 12.01. There's a sign-up sheet located on a table in the back of the room. Each speaker will have five minutes to address the board. And with that, Ms. Marshall, would you please call the roll? Mrs. Davidson? Here. Dr. Nesterbaker? Here. Mr. Bell? Here. Mr. Villardo? Here. Mrs. Altman is absent. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand with us and join in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We move on to agenda item 3.01. Would I, I'd like to have a motion to approve the minutes from Board of Education uh, Organization and Regular Meeting, Monday, January 13, executive and Executive Session, Saturday, January 18. Could I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. Second. Thank you much. Um, any discussion, any comments or anything? We're good. Uh, please call the roll. Mr. Bell? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Dr. Nesterbaker? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Moving on to agenda item 4.01, winter graduation. This is uh, one of the most enjoyable things that we get to do. And we are here to honor all of those who are graduating. And you may know there's a number from each school, but three of those graduates are here with us tonight. And we want to thank you for coming tonight uh, with, I know, some family and some friends, and uh, you got some good cake, didn't you? Was it, it was pretty good cake, wasn't it? We're just really grateful that you're here. It is such an honor for the board and the executive leadership team to, um, to be able to do this. Uh, so thank you for being here. Um, I would like to have a motion to approve and recognize the following candidates for winter graduation from Westerville Central, Westerville North, and Westerville South High Schools who have completed all local and state requirements. So a motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. And do we vote on this now, Ms. Marshall, or after? If you'd like to, yeah. Yes, because we're going to approve you. I just wanted to leave you hanging there for just just a little bit longer. No. Uh, yes, please call the roll. Dr. Nesterbaker? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Uh, Dr. Kellogg, I'll turn this over to you. And I think, are we going to go up there right now? Or I'll, after? I will give you instructions. Gotcha. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, I'd want to, um, I, I too want to thank the graduates and their families for being here tonight. It was very nice when we were at the reception. I got a chance to talk to each of the three graduates. And um, not surprisingly, each one of them uh, quite vividly expressed to me their next steps and where they're going. And it's always rewarding to hear people get to the finish line but already know what they want to be doing next. So kudos to each of them for, for having those aspirations and following through with them. We're, we're very proud of them. So here we go with the official part. We're ready for this. President Villardo and members of the Board of Education, distinguished former and current faculty and staff, honored guests and proud families of the graduates of Central, North, and South High Schools. The State of Ohio establishes in law two requirements for earning a high school diploma. 
the successful completion of a rigorous academic curriculum and successful completion of all State of Ohio graduation requirements. The administration of Westerville City Schools has verified and the Board of Education has unanimously approved their candidacy for graduation and so it's with great pleasure as Superintendent of Westerville City Schools that it conferred to each semester graduate a Westerville City Schools State of Ohio Diploma of Completion. So to begin the ceremony, I'm going to invite each of the principals forward. They'll offer a few um, uh, comments for our graduates. Each one of them will then, after their comments, invite their graduates up to come forward to read their, to get their diploma. So I'd ask Mr. Lanier first. Um, follow up, Mr. Yancey, did you, did one, we're going to, Mr. Yancey does not have, graduates didn't show this evening, but here to support, we appreciate that. So after, after Mr. Lanier, we'll go to Mr. Hensey, he'll do a Westerville South. So now if you'd join me up front, we can hand out the diplomas. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kellogg. Uh, President Bellardo, members of the Board of Education, uh, Dr. Kellogg and Treasurer Marshall, um, I echo your sentiments, uh, President Bellardo, that this is a uh, my favorite thing, whether it be winter graduation, summer graduation, or the, or the commencement we have in, in the spring, uh, this is, uh, for a building principal, uh, an exciting moment. Um, Robert Frost has a famous poem called The Road Not Taken, and the famous, the, the most recognized passage goes like this. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the road less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. We celebrate this evening our winter grads as they have taken a different path than their peers. Uh, some are graduating early, and some are, uh, have taken a little longer than others to uh, get to this point in time to meet their graduation requirements. Um, the bottom line is, even though you've taken a different path to be here, uh, the message is you have to understand that the road that you have taken to get here is the road you've meant to be on. And, and now you're here, and congratulations on your success. Uh, there's a lot that goes into educating students in today's world. However, one skill that stands out when it comes to success in life is the skill of perseverance. Each of you, all of you have shown that skill of perseverance. Ultimate success comes to those who stay the course and find a way to make it to the finish line. And really for you, this is not the finish line, this is the starting line, because from this point forward, you're moving, and moving on uh, with great plans and, and great ideas about what you're going to do in the future. As adults, it's easy for us to talk about perseverance in the abstract. However, real life doesn't follow a script, and real life can throw you some curveballs from time to time. True perseverance, the kind that leads to success, only happens when you face difficulties head on and come out a better person on the other side. So at Westerville Central, we have 12 students that are on our list. We have two who have made it here this evening. So we're very uh, proud and happy and excited to introduce our two uh, Central graduates who are in attendance this evening. I want to start with Hamda Mohammed Omar. Come on up, Mohammed. Uh, our second uh, student in attendance tonight, our second graduate, is Hope Elizabeth Snively. In addition to our students, I want to extend a congratulations uh, to North and South as well, our students from North and South. And I want to especially thank um, the Board of Education for taking the time to acknowledge and recognize our students in this way. Not a lot of districts do this, and it really shows um, the heart and dedication that our board has to, uh, to our student body. So we really, truly appreciate uh, taking the time. Uh, and let me finish it with, by saying uh, we love it when our Warhawks leave the nest and soar, right? Okay, congratulations. Uh, my privilege now is to introduce the principal from Westville South, Mike Hinsey.
Thank you, Tom. Uh, President Villardo, Superintendent Kellogg, and Treasurer Marshall, and members of the Board of Education, uh, like Mr. Lanier said, we want to thank you for, for taking extra time. There's even cake. It's a really special event. Um, we're proud of all of, of you, our graduates, and we're really thrilled that you took the time and, and your family and friends took the time to come here tonight. Um, it takes, and I'm going to be echoing what Mr. Lanier said, perseverance to demonstrate. Um, you demonstrated perseverance by being here in, in all of the winter graduates that we have. Perseverance is something that is learned and I'm going to go to a, a different quote. I'm not going to give you a big, long history because it's a really long history lesson. Hannibal Barca invaded the Roman Empire. If you, um, I'm an old history teacher. Um, one of my favorite quotes about determination, I think it's awesome because it's so short, we will either find a way or make one. And the simplicity of that um, and the truth of it is life. We will either find a way or make one. And you did a little bit of both. Um, you did things, you may have seen adversity. Everybody here and everybody on our list of winter graduates has a different story. Um, some of it was adversity, and you overcame that. Maybe you found a way. Um, maybe someone helped you find a way, and maybe someone helped you make a way. Um, so those sorts of skills, you need an opportunity to build that skill, and it is perseverance, like Mr. Lanier said, and we're thrilled that you found it now because you made it to the finish line uh, with us. It's also important for us to recognize the board for being so supportive, doing things like this, putting together all the supports that, that you relied on and that helped you get here. So graduates, please take a second to think about and maybe turn around and thank your family, your friends, and the teachers that helped you get here today. Because not only do you have to have an opportunity to be challenged, you also need to have a supportive environment to meet the challenges. So graduates, we are proud of you um, and, wh and what you've accomplished, and, and you've met the rigorous requirements to graduate set forth by Westerville City Schools and the state of Ohio. So congratulations. Um, with us tonight, we have, a, we have a long list of graduates, but thank you for coming. And, I, and if you can come up and, and, and go through the line, Nana, and then we'll shake hands. Um, we're proud to recognize Nana and Poma as a Westerville graduate. I wanted to, uh, one more time, congratulate all of the graduates from um, Central and South. And as we say at Westerville South, uh, once a wildcat, always a wildcat. Congratulations. for the minutes.
Thank you for allowing us to uh, do that. That is really, uh, uh, it, it's more than a privilege that the board gets to participate in these kinds of activities. And um, we just are very honored to, to, to celebrate with these students and their families, of course, and the schools. And moving on to agenda item 4.02, Public Education Week. Um, it, it will come as no surprise to you that we are uh, uh, defenders of, fans of, and um, committed to uh, public education, of course, or we would not be doing what we do. Uh, there are times when we feel, uh, sometimes pretty strongly, that uh, entities in legislature and uh, other governmental entities are not as uh, supportive of public education as we believe they should be. And so one of the things that a Board of Education can do, many entities like us can do, is we can provide resolutions standing firmly for a cause, a, a purpose. You know that we did uh, a few weeks ago a resolution um, standing against uh, vouchers and ed choice expansion and the taking of public voted money for private usage, which we consider to be disingenuous at best. Uh, my friend, Dr. Nancy Nestor Baker, would use more colorful language. Um, so she's biting her tongue over here right now. However, tonight um, we have a resolution uh, recognizing Public Education Week uh, not because it's a week, but because we believe that public education is something to be resolved about. And so could I have a motion and a second for this resolution recognizing public education week? So moved. Second. And I have asked our new uh, uh, vice uh, president, uh, Mr. Bell, to read the resolution into the record, please. Resolution recognizing public education week. Whereas the Westerville City School District educates approximately 15,500 students and is one of the state's longest public schools, largest public school systems, and whereas the Westerville City School District is one of the area's largest employers and has a significant impact on the overall well-being of our local and regional economies. And whereas traditional public school districts in Ohio serve more than 1.8 million students and employ more than 245,000 Ohioans. And whereas all children in Ohio should have access to the highest quality education possible. And whereas Ohio citizens recognize the important role that an effective education plays in preparing all students to be successful adults. And whereas quality education is critically important to the economic vitality of the Buckeye State. And whereas public education not only helps to diversify our economy but also enhances the vibrancy of our community. And whereas Ohio has uh, many high quality school administrators, teaching professionals, and support staff who are committed to educating our children. And whereas public education is celebrated across the country by millions of students, parents, educators, schools, and organizations to raise awareness of the need for effective public schools. Therefore, the Westerville City School District Board of Education hereby recognizes January 26th through February 1st of 2020 as Public Education Week and calls this observance to the attention of all Ohioans. Thank you, sir. Uh, sometimes we share our thoughts on these kind of things and, and uh, sometimes we're accused of sharing a little bit too much, but I, I, I have said what I want to say, but I think it's important if you all would like to offer a word 
uh, regarding this resolution or public education in general. That, that, that I, I would encourage you to share that, if you would like. You know I would like. These sort of recognitions years ago would have been kind of an of course and everybody knows the importance of public education. But over time, I think we have all come to understand that's no longer true. Not everyone fully recognizes the importance of public education. Public education goes back to the very founding of this country. When you read John Adams' words, when you read Thomas Jefferson's words, and then as you read the words of others throughout the decades that this country has been in existence, you find a clear understanding of the public good that is public education. In our country, we always have a tension between the community or the overall and the individual. And that's a good thing. And until very recently in this country, public education <coughs> has been the example of how that tension works best. But beginning in about 1987 with the publication of A Nation at Risk, a number of things were put into play in states across this country, most definitely in the state of Ohio, that have, for a multitude of reasons, been used to undermine public education. And as the years have passed and the sound bites have gotten more strident and the supposed evidence has been trotted out for people to see that public education is a failure, evidence which isn't accurate, too many people have lost sight of the importance of the public good of public education. It doesn't mean there isn't a place for private education. There certainly is. But public education is a foundational institution for the success of American society. And if we, as an American society, work to dismantle that foundation, we shouldn't be surprised at the cracks that begin to occur. So when we have a resolution like this, it's much more than, yay, we are a great school system, and yay, we love public education. It is, thank God we have this institution, and let's support it, and let's defend it, and let's stand for it as we have done in the past, as we need to do in the future, and as we here in Westerville certainly do now. Any others? Um, I would just like to say yes, what she said. Um, uh, and to lend my voice um, to the chorus of other voices um, in support of public education. Um, actions taken in the Ohio legislature uh, recently, um, I believe are uh, weakening um, our um, public educational system um, and a, a continuing a trend that we have seen in public education, not just here in Ohio or central Ohio, but nationwide. Um, and um, these kinds of attacks cannot continue. Uh, if, if they do, um, I fear that um, public education will go to the point of no return. Um, and we will wind up with two separate educational systems, one for the haves and one for the have-nots. Um, and this country has a history of education being the one equalizer uh, that will enable and allow her citizens um, to be successful later in life. And so um, I consider it an honor and a privilege to be able to work with you all as we continue the fight um, in support of public education. Thank you, sir. Um, I agree with my colleagues 100%, and I stand with you, whatever I can do to fight this, absolutely. So. Thank you. 
normally, but Ms. Marshall, Dr. Kellogg, I, I think it's appropriate if you'd like to share something. I, I, I don't want to put you on the spot if it's not. I, I think you all have said it eloquently and with great passion. Um, uh, having done this for 36 years, I've seen the evolution and fear where the current path might take us if we don't get it um, changed. I am greatly encouraged, particularly here in Westville, by the energy I've seen from the community, particularly in response to the Ed Choice piece. Um, it, it just, uh, I, I, knew, I knew the passion was there and to watch it come out. Um, and I would ask us to continue the pressure. Um, it's not correction of Ed Choice we need, it's erasure of Ed Choice we need. Um, we need the funding formula, the fair funding formula. We need that codified so we understand what the um, financial circumstances will be for us as a district long term. And we need a report card that makes sense to the community. Um, until we have those things, until we have a report card in place that makes sense and a funding formula that's codified, don't mess with anything else because those are your two foundational things. The constitutional obligation is to public education. Fulfill that obligation first. Said, so, thank you. Thank you. I would echo Dr. Kellogg's comments, and I think Vaughn makes an important point with um, the equalizer with education. Uh, you hear story after story of people who wouldn't be where they are today if not for the education they receive through public education. So, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you guys for doing this. Oh, thank you. And I, I think I would say before we vote in favor of this, if you all are in favor of this, any of you out there, um, maybe thank uh, a teacher that had an impact on you an educator that had an impact on you um, in your life, even if you're like really old, Mr. <laughs> Hershiser, if you just have anybody that you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, thank, thank a teacher or two. That, that's, maybe that's a way of putting some feet on it. Uh, please call the roll. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Dr. Nestbaker? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Thank you all for allowing us to do that. Agenda item 5.01, Summer 2020 Learning Opportunities. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Oh, we don't have to vote on this. I appreciate you working with me, brother. <laughs> you and I, I are on the same page anyway, aren't we? I got you. <laughs> Dr. Ebrecht. I was going to say thank you. Share. <laughs> <laughs> Share with us. I, I know I'm quick, but not that quick. <laughs> I'd like to, member, uh, President Villardo, members of the board, Mrs. Marshall, Dr. Kellogg, I'd like to thank you for having me here and thank you for supporting public education and speaking about it the way in which you do. Uh, I'm a product of public education and uh, I'm proud to be in Westerville and be a part of this group. And also proud to say that in Westerville, we even provide that public education to those at risk students that need support even in the summer. And not many districts do that. And we have for several years, and that's what brings me forward tonight. So with our Westerville uh, program, we uh, serve students in elementary. I always want to go back to the fact that a few years ago, we did not support our kindergarten students. It's not, I mean, we supported them during the school year, but not in the summer. And we thought uh, we, the board uh, invested dollars and have continued to invest in that, that uh, we, we don't want to leave any child behind. And uh, we do have our kindergartners a part of this program. And you'll see it's broken down into a K-3 structure, 4-5. We have a middle school program, 6-8, and then, of course, our 9-12 program. And we even make sure that uh, we provide an experience for our, our uh, kindergarten students that will be enrolling that have not had any preschool experience at all, an opportunity to come in. And the families that come out of that program, it's a small but mighty program. We get uh, generally, we fill it up with 15 uh, students, but those 15 students, uh, what a great opportunity for them to come in and experience school. And I always go back to uh, it's even a better experience for the parents that have to drop their kids off and leave the building. It's a good experience for them too. Uh, so technology, you know, we continue with this one-to-one -one initiative. You know, that a few years ago was like, man, that's awesome. Well, we, we, we do that and we do it on a regular basis now, but we have that ability to provide that. We do provide a blended approach, uh, even down under our elementary. Uh, we provide uh, tools for students to use, but also uh, in our high schools, we provide uh, online courses, uh, but with, we believe that online courses still means face-to-face, -face. and uh, those students need that face-to-face -face support uh, and immediate 
feedback. And so that's what our program is, is around. So you can see our locations this year. Uh, we'd like to be at Hawthorne, Heritage Middle School, Westville North, as well as Westville Central. Uh, we work uh, hand in hand with uh, our uh, office, uh, our facilities, and uh, in, to ensure that you know, those places are available and uh, they'll be uh, very cool for us uh, with no uh, major construction which, as you know, in our district could be a bit of a task, but uh, this is where we're going to be. And uh, pl just something to note, I, you know, all of you on the board have heard this presentation similar. Uh, there's a few little caveats, and I'll highlight those as we go through, but, and, and I'll make sure that I point out the, the, the small differences because uh, we look to enhance what we already do. Grades 4 through 8, it's a 19-day program. It's usually 20 days, but uh, we felt important due to the way in which the calendar fell this year, uh, we could have the students uh, take a couple weeks off from school uh, at the end of the year, come back and still be done by July 4th, mm. which enables them to have another little bit of a summer break before the start of the school year. And, but at the same time, um, I was going to go for 20 days on July 3rd, but I was informed no one will be here and I would be the only one. So I had to back <laughs> off on that and go to 19 days. And in speaking with uh, Mr. Hershiser, he uh, supported that as well. And uh, we we're able to go from 8.30 to 12.30. Usually we go 8.30 to 12, three and a half, but we're going to move that to four hours. And believe it or not, it's still within our budget, okay? Because one, we're not transporting on that 20th day, reducing costs, et cetera. Do, do, did some personnel offsetting, and so that's what enables us to do that with no budgetary impact. And, you know, I might come back next year and say, you know what, I lo really love those four hours. So we'll just have to see how that goes. Uh, but uh, it'll be good four hours uh, straight up. So our elementary uh, still focusing, uh, how do we identify based on STAR, math data. It's all data based on who gets invited to summer uh, intervention in our elementary and middle schools. Uh, we want to prevent that summer regression and make sure we're filling in learning gaps and be able to come back to you in August or September with, my board, with, with the board report saying that we're able to attain, for example, third graders, uh, the, a large number, over 99%, meeting third grade uh, reading guarantee requirements. We don't want to leave any student behind that if we provided that summer support that they could then move into the fourth grade. So it is targeted. You can see that we average uh, in our uh, program, K-5, we average 471 students. I think that's a significant amount of students that we support. Our middle school program, we continue to uh, evolve and enhance students six through eight. Uh, we focus on English language arts mathematics, but yet we do want to have that STEAM feel. And you'll recall that uh, about three years ago, we were charged to increase those numbers. And we were able to hold steady at 116. And uh, so we hope to continue to, to even that out or surpass that this next year. And we're excited to say that, you know, we participated in this pumpkin glow, and this was a big community event and very well received, and it's going to be an annual event in our community. Uh, I serve on the Parks Foundation Board, and it's been a nice relationship between the schools and, and our, um, in the Westerville Parks. And, and it was nice finally to be able to have photos from the actual event, okay, as opposed to clip art that we got off the Internet from somewhere else in, in America. So those were actual pictures from the event. And we're going to, this year, uh, we're, we're moving away from the pumpkin glow, but we are going to support them, by the way, in the fall. Uh, it, it takes a lot of manpower to carve all those pumpkins out. And so we, we still have, have some, Mr. Manthony, I think you're still recovering from that. Uh, his classroom was a <laughs> part of that. But uh, we're going to still participate through the schools, but not in summer. But for the uh, middle school experience, we're actually going to, take advantage of the, uh, po the uh, land lab, the pond that's behind Westerville North High School. And uh, through my relationship at the point at Otterbein, we're going to be able to uh, have some individuals come from there and support our students. And we're actually going to be ma making fishing equipment and bobbers and all kinds of cool stuff, uh, integrate the math, the language arts, and we will put a sign up, gone fishing, okay? <laughs> Uh, when we leave, and I, well, I even hope to go over to Hoover. It's not that far away, okay? And so that's one aspect of what we're going to be doing over in the shop 
at West Row North this summer is uh, going towards the fishing aspect of things. And then um, we're going to be working with the Furniture Bank. And I want to sh share a little message with you about the Furniture Bank. Yes. Okay, going to go with it. So what you were going to see here um, was a... The mission of the Furniture Bank is really to help those families who are struggling with homelessness, domestic violence, eviction. Really what we're trying to do is turn their empty house into a home and, and trying to make it a nurturing, safe place to, to raise a family. So many times we don't think about how cool it is to have a bed <laughs> or the value of a table. We don't even think about what we, what we do around the table. I mean, we eat. We play games, we do homework, we have critical conversations. You know, if you're a child and, and you don't have a bed to sleep on, how are you going to be successful in school? That is awesome. And that is what we're going to do for the Furniture Bank, is we're going to help make those beds, we're going to help make those tables, we're going to help make those nightstands that, that people don't have in their homes. And we're going to partner with the Furniture Bank at the shop, and our middle school students are going to support that. And what's interesting is some of the kids that, we're gonna, that are going to be doing that may be helping themselves in the long run. Mm -hmm. So I just feel very blessed to, to partner up. And um, that's, that's the direct... That, when, when we wrote the grant several years ago to develop what is now the shop, I would never have thought I'd be talking to you about making furniture during summer. But uh, thanks to Mr. Reeves and his team, uh, we were able to do that. And now we can start seeing the fruits of our labor in many ways. You see that every, you know, with a lot of things around. But uh, that's going to be one of those special things that we do. So I look forward to coming back and showing you pictures uh, in the fall of what we did. I love the message about eating around the table, mm -hmm. doing homework at a table. And the whole concept of some people don't have a table. And what can we do to support them? but yet it still infuse education, all aspects to do that. Okay, so uh, our high school, we, we are going to uh, continue uh, providing course remediation as well as course advancement, a credit recovery. We, uh, the board, again, chose several years ago, I'll remind the community, that they lowered the price from $400 uh, to $100 for credit recovery, and that certainly has provided a hand up to our students and uh, helps our, uh, those students graduate in the long term, most definitely. And our, this is our summer musical production. As you know, last year uh, we did, uh, unfortunately, we were a little bit more in the negative than what we wanted to. You gave us some seed money. But, uh, you know, it was the first year. We call that an implementation dip, by the way. And uh, so we plan to have another summer production this year. Uh, we hope to break even as well as uh, maybe even surpass our budget uh, in terms of, the, of being uh, positive. And we are seeking community partnerships to offset the costs. And the community will hear more about that. I know uh, Rick Bannister is a big part of that to help get that message out. Uh, so Mrs. Marshall uh, feels better about continuing with uh, summer musicals. And I'm not just saying Mrs. Marshall, but everybody uh, <laughs> would feel a lot better if, uh, you know, it's, it's not a, uh, it, it doesn't become cost prohibitive for us to do that. And if the board supports us in moving forward, um, that summer program we hope to announce tomorrow. And uh, it'll be a big, big push out. So uh, we're waiting to hear from the board uh, whether, you know, that's something that that uh, we would choose to support yeah. moving forward. And uh, of course, we have the uh, quarter elective credit that students can earn in, in fine arts. It's a pass-fail grade. Uh, we believe that uh, that experience is important, but it also is important to be transcribed and to highlight, for example, during college enrollment. Our almost kindergarten program, uh, it's five days. I mentioned that earlier. It's going to be at Hawthorne this year. It's two hours for five days, and it is $95. Uh, we've held that price now for several years, and uh, I hope as long as I'm around that we can always do it for less than 100 Okay, so $95, they get two hours of instruction and experience that uh, I think really helps kids propel them into the school year. And we do that right kind of about a week and a half, two weeks before school starts. So we, we want to continue to focus on, you know, how we're going to market, recruit students, especially in our middle schools. We, we constantly... Uh, take into consideration tuition and fees. We uh, look to staff it. Our HR department is wonderful. You think about it. These are basically every year we start up three 
new schools every summer because we have to hire from scratch. Uh, we get the best and the brightest, and they do, they do awesome uh, things for us. Uh, and it's also a great training ground to pilot materials, which we'll continue to do. And uh, Mrs. Wallace, uh, Mrs. Relford are uh, certainly interested in continuing that, along with Mr. Reeves. Uh, community partnerships, especially for that musical, we're going to need to get into, uh, see what we can do to support, and uh, always take into consideration our budget. So with that, uh, questions or clarification, or perhaps even just a celebration? A question or two. Um, <coughs> as you look at the numbers of uh, families that we reach out to, to ask students to participate, who need to participate, what are some of the predominant reasons that families choose not to participate? Well, uh, one, they're, they're leaving for an extended period of time, of course, during the summer, that's, that's certainly. The one thing that we heard for many years was transportation. And the board, uh, we used to only transport students in grades K, K, through, uh, K through five, which didn't necessarily make sense because at one time our K-8 program was all in the same location and we had a K-5 bus, but yet the brother who was coming in 6-8, we didn't transport. And also, we, we heard that was a major barrier for our high schools. And the board, uh, a few years ago, uh, had insight to, we're not going to do that. We're going to level the playing field, and we provide busing K-8 now. Excuse me, K-12. We provide it K-12. So uh, that was the, the biggest barrier I always heard, okay? Now, and also about child care, for example, is sometimes an issue. You know, we, we, it's, a, it's a morning program. We're done now. Uh, we're going to be done now a little bit later. They'll arrive home about 1.30. And some families, you know, the whole thing about child care between the 1.30 and the 4.30 time or until they get home from work is sometimes a barrier. Um, that's something that, you know, we do have some, you know, opportunities, but, but no direct child care within our schools. Okay. Okay. And how do we seek to reach the families of those children who have no preschool enrollment for our kindergarten, upcoming kindergarten class? Yeah, we uh, reach out to local churches. We uh, put flyers up throughout the community. Um, we do some direct mails. We use social media. We, you know, we, we fill the class up every year. Um, we, we even sometimes have to go over one or two just because, you know, that's the right thing to do. So uh, we try all those and, and certainly talk about, you know, on television, Hawthorne Elementary, <laughs> and get it out through the board. But, uh, yes. And the last thing I had felt like I wanted to do an infomercial, but <laughs> I, I had to break from that. Last thing I have is a, a comment. The experiential learning and, uh, in the, uh, the Pond Lab and with the Furniture Bank, <coughs> which I love, by the way, uh, I really uh, am intrigued by what we see, what we've seen thus far, and what we're going to see as we continue to expand that, uh, the role of that experiential learning in the academic success that we are hoping these young people achieve. The um, success that we see, and I expect we will see, suggests some really important things for education around the calendar. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm excited about it. Um, every year you come with something that's even more exciting. So thank you for your attention to that. I'm just waiting to do scuba sometime in that pond. <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> but, uh, yes, thank you. Actually, we do do a little bit of scuba now, by the way. We really do. That's a whole other topic. CFA, Credit Flex. <laughs> this is Davidson. You're looking at me puzzled. No, I'm just... There's something I want to say, but I'm not going to. Okay, all righty. <laughs> Any... Uh... No, I was just going to say anything with holiday lights that you... Oh, yes, exactly. Okay. I'm not... No... <laughs> Any other relative comments? Awesome report. We're very excited. Thank you to you and your team didn't for you all bring, the work. So didn't you bring some folks here that you want to introduce, or was that coming? Um, you know what, Dr. Kellogg, that was a great segue, okay? Mr. Mantonix is here uh, with us tonight. He was our past uh, administrator, <laughs> and uh, I believe that, that's the guy right there. He's, he helps make the middle school um, 
powerful for us in, in that program. And uh, we're going to post that position, and I'm hoping Mr. Manthanique supplies again. Okay? <laughs> We could do a resolution regarding that if you'd I'll like. I'll talk to Mrs. Mantonix. She... <laughs> Thank you. Any others? Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Really good work. Awesome. Moving on to agenda item 6.01, public comments. We have none at this uh, location. Uh, Agenda item 7.01, approve the financial report and investments for November, December 2019. Do I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Ms. Marshall, will you share with us, please? Yes, thank you, President Florida, members of the board. So um, December, we had one board meeting and lots of holiday time. So uh, we're going over, in November, we also had some holiday time. So we're going over November and December today, two months and one month, because we didn't do anything in December um, for the financial reports. So for November the 30th month ending, we had year-to-date receipts in the general fund of about $87.4 million, year-to-date expenditures of about $75.8 million, and an unencumbered fund balance of $126.9 million, and that's for the general fund only. All funds had year-to-date receipts of $116.5 million, year-to-date expenditures of $112.8 million, and an unencumbered fund balance in total of $178.3 million. And again, I'd like to remind the board that we do have the COPS funds for Westville South Project that's sitting in investments, and you know, as that project progresses, those funds will be spent down. For the month of December, this is halfway through our fiscal year. We had year-to-date receipts in the general fund of $91.9 million, year-to-date expenditures of $89.9 million, and an unencumbered fund balance of $118 million. For all funds, we had $124.8 million in year-to-date receipts, year-to-date expenditures of $132.5 million, and an unencumbered fund balance of $168.9 million. And that's all I have. Are there any questions from the board about that? Please call the roll. Mr. Bell? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Velarde? Yes. Thank you very much, Ms. Marshall. 7.02 MOU WAA School Psychologist. Uh, Dr. Hopkins, do you have anything to? I'll talk about it. Oh, you're going to share with that as well? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. You want to do the motion in a second? Well, I suppose I should. Could I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Velardo, members of the board. So this is a memorandum of understanding with the Westerville Education Association. This, uh, we had a mid-year retirement for school psychologists, and this will allow us to temporarily fill the position. As you know, hiring during the middle of a school year is not always ideal. So this will allow us to fill the position on, for a temporary measure for the rest of the school year so that we can post it for Great. next year later. Great. Thank you. And I apologize. I should have known that was under finance that you would handle that. Any questions, concerns? Please call the roll. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mr. Velarde? Yes, agenda item 8, point, uh, personal cons personnel consent agenda 8.01 through 8.10. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Yes. All right. President Villardo, members of the board, Dr. Kellogg, I'd like to present for your consideration tonight's personnel consent agenda. Some of the highlights include the following. We have a total of three resignations from the classified and licensed positions. We have two one-time payments um, for staff who are participating in professional development on topics that include the launch of our Educator Rising program, which is an, an initiative to support the start of a Grow Your Own program that encourages students to consider a career in education, as well as some staff are assisting with gifted identification. There is the employment of four individuals in a number of classified positions. And finally, in the licensed employment section, we have the employment of a number of people to various supplemental and classified people activity program positions. Be happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. 
tell me, tell us a little more about the educator rise. What is that? Um, yes, that's um, kind of, if you might have remembered from times when we were at school, like Future Educators of America or something like that. It's now called Educators Rising. It's uh, affiliated with Phi Delta Kappa, and it's a program that we're going to start at our three high schools that are going to be led by some of our uh, teachers to um, kind of have a club for um, students who are interested, uh, maybe in teaching, counseling, any career in education, to have opportunities to get together, maybe shadow some teachers in our district, and just learn about some of the opportunities that are associated with with, um, becoming an educator and hopefully the end goal is to try to recruit some of these folks to become educators after they finish high school and then four years in college as well. I, I, I love that. I, I suspect that we all love that idea. Um, but I, I think I'd ask you to just uh, just keep us posted on that as it, as it goes along. That we'll sounds like Thank a you. wonderful opportunity. Um, any other thoughts, comments, questions? Please call the rule. Dr. Nostabaker? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Velarde? Yes. Uh, 9.01 old business, we have none. 10.01, uh, we have some new business, first readings. 10.01 uh, first reading policy 1240.01. <laughs> non reemployment of the superintendent. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to uh, explain that? Yeah, I'd be to more him, than happy or... to. <laughs> I like to explain it. <laughs> uh, President Villardo, Dr. Kellogg, and members of the board, um, the first revision is policy 1240.01. It adds a section that emphasizes the requirement um, for superintendents to have and to maintain a current license for this position of employment. Although this has long been a requirement and a basic expectation for employment, this revision clearly states the need to maintain the required licensure throughout the term of employment. That's an important addendum. <laughs> you, you don't want to reply to that thing. I'm covered. You're covered. He's good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And these are first readings, just to let you know, so there's not a, a vote or a motion or anything. And I, as I'm reading it, 10.02 through 10.06 all have to do with tobacco use by different uh, constituencies and on school grounds. Correct. Do you want to take? Do you want to d yes. explain them separately or explain um, why I'll there's so I'll go ahead, many? if it's okay with the board, address the uh, first three, and then I'll have Debbie Meisner come up to address Absolutely. the next two. Yeah. Um, yes. But thank you for that opportunity there. The um, policy 1615 is actually a new policy. Um, previously, we did not have a separate policy that addressed the um, regulation or the restrictions of the use of tobacco by administrators. So that is new in set policy 1615. Five. Policies 3215 and 4215 um, add a little bit more clarification to the employee groups uh, for professional as well as classified staff. Um, some of the major revisions to these policies include the expansion of the definition of tobacco to now include e-cigarettes, um, as well as prohibiting all tobacco advertising on school grounds and at all events. These revisions reflect current Ohio law and are recommended for adoption to maintain accurate policies. Thank you very much. And then, Ms. Meisner, you're going to talk to 10.05, use of tobacco in general, or? Yes, sir. Could I yes. ask Dr. Hopkins a question first? Yes. Why do we need a separate policy about tobacco and administrators when we already have a policy that addresses professional staff? Well, the way that the... Uh Board policy is set up. There's different divisions for the classified staff, professional staff, which includes our educators, psychologists, counselors, et cetera, and then also administrators. So the need for clarity and consistency is since that we do have them separated, it would be wise to have a policy that clearly states it within each of those sections. The section's 1,000. I think it's 4,000 and 5,000. Okay. I can see that. I guess I will always lobby for more succinctness and more conglomeration rather than more policies. Mm -hmm. Seems to me that given the similarity across these policies, we should be able to have our administrative staff, our other administrative staff, 
our other staff, our other staff, all of our components of staff should be able to be identified within a policy right. and any slight differences that occur within that should be able to be delineated in that policy. So I'm not going to demand that we do that mm -hmm. here, but going forward, I would really, really like us to see if we can't focus on becoming more succinct and incorporating within the grounds of a policy the necessary language so that we don't find ourselves looking for this policy and not understanding that policy exists and all of those different components. I think that we could help ourselves by looking at policy perhaps a little more parameterized. I don't think it's a word, but I just made it up. I, I like it. I certainly understand the uh, sentiment there, so thank you for that feedback. Hashtag that out. <laughs> Hashtag parameterized. parameterized. Thank you very much, Dr. Hopkins. Ms. Meisner will come forward and share a little bit with us, right? 10.05 policy 5512, use of tobacco. Are, are you, do you want to just go ahead and describe those two to us, 10.05 and 10.06? President Villardo, members of the board, I'm happy to speak with you on these two separate yet within the tobacco section policies. Um, please know that Westville Schools has been 100% tobacco free since the late 80s. And honestly, um, the revisions in this language, there are, there are no changes in our actual practice that's based upon what the language is saying here. Nothing's changing there. Um, we did add to all these po policies the verbiage at all times, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That is a particular piece of language that the Ohio Department of Health looks for. And to check the box for them to say that we are 100% tobacco free, we need that language in all of our policies. Um, I think Dr. Hopkins has already shared with you what you need to know about the policies. I'm happy to answer any questions. If we parameterized it, <laughs> that language would be in one or two policies and we'd be covered. You're preaching to the choir. <laughs> she, she knows. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Meisner, I think you're going to share with us 10.07 first reading policy 8403 school resource officer. President Villardo, members of the board, this policy was just simply updated to add the emphasis of the expectation that student privacy be maintained in accordance with both federal and state laws. Again, I see this as no change to our practice. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any questions at this point? Thank you very much. Uh, 10.08 policy, first reading, policy 7110, realignment. Mr. Dorn is going to share with the joy. Yeah, is any? Maybe. Good evening, Ple President Villardo, Vice President Bell, members of the board, Dr. Kellogg and Ms. Marshall. The policy revision in front of you this evening represents the beginning of a journey to draw attendance boundaries for the new elementary and middle schools in Minerva Park at the south end of the district and adjust the existing elementary and middle school boundaries. The two new buildings will expand capacity in preparation for forecasted growth as well as relieve capacity issues in individual buildings throughout the district. Revisions to this policy will help provide guidelines and considerations to be utilized through the realignment process. Changes in the policy reflect concepts surrounding current and forecasted growth at these levels, current capacity issues, more students attending schools closer to home, building and district demographic profiles, current and future non-transport boundaries, potential impact on students, families, and relationships to currently assigned schools, and relationships between elementary and middle schools. Furthermore, the policy revision outlines concepts for committee work when committees are used during the realignment process, as is recommended in this instance. The language also emphasizes the importance of community feedback throughout the process of realignment. We have already engaged the community in a thought exchange to allow our committees to understand the basic premises of neighborhood schools and relationships to building demographics. Additionally, at this point, uh, at this point in the future, when committee work is ready for review, there will also be a series of gallery walks for our community to review the committee's work and provide their feedback. If you have any questions regarding specific edits, I'll be happy to respond. Questions or, well, questions or thoughts at this time? 
Just one quick question. The thought exchange, how long is that open? I think it's open through this week. It, so it's still open? Yeah. I believe, open. yes. Thank you for being uh, very, I would say, I think we would say, uh, thoughtful, meticulous, um, trying to really care for students and their families in this process, getting uh, community engagement in this process being as concise and yet expansive in trying to engage people. What I have seen of this process so far really honors a lot of the um, key constituents in our school district. So truly thankful for the work that you and your team have done to date. It is open. At the thought exchange is open through uh, through January 31st, midnight January 31st. So um, you can get the link from our website if you need it. Um, anybody's in the community is welcome to offer their comments. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sure. Appreciate it. Do you want me to talk about the charge? Talk about the, the next item? Yes. Yes. Great. Tim, well, I was, I was going to that. Okay. I, was, I was thanking you for that. 10.09 first reading realignment committee charged elementary school middle school mr dorn thank you in addition to the policy revision we are presenting you with an updated charge to the realignment committees as referenced in policy 7110 revisions to the previ previous charge were necessary to be in line with updated policy because of the scope of the process limiting realignment to just elementary and middle schools the charge provides additional clarity and focus as it relates to the scope. As mentioned earlier, there is an intent to utilize committee work during this process that includes a number of community members and district administrators as well as others. The plan development committee is made up of district leadership team and a few other key administrators. The focus of the plan development committee is to share information with the realignment committees and support them with requested data. The plan development committee will also ensure that the work comes from the realignment committees uh, will honor the board's policy and charge. Uh, in our model for this process, there will be two realignment committees, the elementary school realignment committee, co-chaired by Barb Wallace and one community member, uh, who's, and then the middle school realignment committee, co-chaired by Scott Reeves and a community member. Uh, these two committees will work concurrently at the same site, such that as needed, they can work collaboratively uh, the plan development committee will also be present for those work sessions to provide any requested uh, data that, that they need. The language in this charge as related to this scope further clarifies and reemphasizes for the committee uh, the concepts surrounding current and forecasted growth at these levels, current and future building capacity issues, more students attending schools closer to home, building and district demographic profiles, current and future non-transport boundaries, potential impact on students, families, and relationships to currently assigned schools, relationships between elementary schools and middle schools, and conformity to all applicable provisions of the Sunshine Law. Thank you. Any questions? Thoughts? One quick comment. We heard the other night at our annual City Council School Board get-together um, the question that was raised about the district's prior focus on ensuring that kids from across the district know kids from across the district. And I have heard that from several other people. And as we go forward through this, and yes, that approach is there when we talk about the relationships across schools, I do want us to be sure that we think about the culture of the district and how the district as one remains one district and that we seek to do what we can to make sure our kids know our kids from various places and that there are opportunities for schools to work together so that that occurs even if we can't maintain the um, breadth of assignment across schools that we once had. So as we go forward, I just want to make sure that all of the components that we have for the realignment committees in a lot of ways function within the um, overall culture of this district and that should never be lost well said thank you any other questions 
comments at this time. Thank you very much for your work again. Moving on to agenda item 11.01, uh, donations. May I have a motion and a second to accept these? So moved. Second. Thank you very much. We continue to be uh, more than pleased with the amount of donations that this school district gets from a variety of sources, from individuals to uh, small companies to corporations. Please know any size gift that you give, we are exceedingly uh, thankful for. Um, please call the roll. Mr. Bell? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Dr. Nasterbaker? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. 11.02 resolution authorizing 2020 2021 membership in the Ohio High School Athletic Association. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Uh, are there any thoughts or questions about this one? Okay, please call the roll. Dr. Nice Baker? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Resolution 11.03, resolution approving uh, purchase of school buses. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Mr. Dorn, do you want to share it with us? Yes, sir. President Villardo, members of the board, this resolution is requesting the authorization to purchase three buses from Cardinal Bus Sales and Service for $284,865. The three new buses will replace existing buses that will be retired from our fleet. We operate on a 14-year replacement cycle as recommended by our 2004 state audit, and we need to replace these buses under those guidelines. Funding for these vehicles will come from the capital improvements levy funds that the community approved on May 5th of 2009. The buses were bid through Meta Solutions Cooperative with Cardinal Bus Sales and Service identified as the lowest responsible bid for the 72 passenger buses. The cost per 72 passenger conventional propane bus is $94,955 and it is recommended that the board approve the purchase of these three 72 passenger buses. Thank you, Mr. Dorn. Any question or comments? The 14 year replacement cycle is still where we need to be. I mean, we agreed to do that in 2004. Uh, do we need to revisit that or are we still comfortable with it? Doesn't affect this, but while you're standing there, I'm going to ask you. No, I think we feel pretty good about the 14 year cycle. Okay. Thank I, you. I, I don't, we don't feel like we're getting rid of them too early and, and we're not keeping them too long. I was more concerned about keeping them too long. Right. Thank you. Hearing no other, please call the roll. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Dr. Nestebreaker? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. 11.04 Bus Driver Hiring Initiative. Mr. Dorn? President Villardo, members of the board, um, in front of you is a resolution to approve the continued practices of the 2019 pilot of hiring incentives for bus drivers and signing and referral bonuses, as well as the district paying all upfront costs for new drivers, both with and without CDLs. Last year at this time, the board approved the pilot program for the calendar year. That program has been successful in helping us find drivers. In March of 2019, we needed to fill 17 contracted driver routes and hire additional drivers as subs. Today, we are only down one contracted route driver, but we still have a need for additional subs. During, during the pilot program, we hired or processed uh, 30 individuals, leading to 13 as new contract drivers and seven additional subs. Uh, one more individual did become a contract driver but has subsequently uh, already resigned. Uh, nine were unable to complete the training. This program provides signing bonuses for new drivers who meet all requirements through the probationary period of which nine individuals were eligible for through the CDL path and 11 individuals were eligible through the new driver incentive path. Uh, we only had one individual eligible for a referral bonus, uh, so um, it seems this referral might be a potential area that we should put more uh, energy in to try and recruit additional drivers. Our current target is for uh, 11 new drivers. The district's maximum financial exposure for incentives for 11 new drivers is $6,050, um, and that would be as if they were all current CDL holders. Uh, the great thing about that is um, even though we'd be expending $6,000 in 
bonuses, uh, signing bonuses and referrals, we'd be saving over $10,000 in cost avoidance from training somebody from scratch. So uh, it's a great program in that regard. Overall, the district's max, uh, maximum additional exposure for 11 new drivers is $4,356. Uh, it's recommended that we continue to operate this way. Thank you. I neglected to ask for a motion and a second, so can I guess that before we do comments? So moved. Second. And are there any comments or questions for Mr. Dorn? Hearing none, thank you very much. Please call the roll. Dr. Nestor-Baker? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Mr. Rolardo? Yes. Uh, business Associate Agreement 11.05. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Thank you so much, Ms. Marshall. You're going to share with us? Yes, President Velardo, members of the board. So this is a business associate agreement. It will allow us to share information with Gallagher. So as you know, Gallagher was the benefits consulting firm that we, the district worked with for many years. Our contract ended with them in December. However, they are still the benefits consulting company that our stop loss insurance works with. So we are part of a group, the Central Ohio School Stop Loss Organization. So we purchase, we carve out the stop loss insurance. Uh, Gallagher is the consultant for them. So in the past, we've relied on the business associate agreement that we had in place with the contract with them to function for that purpose. So we will need to approve this in order to share information needed with them for the stop loss insurance. Questions, uh, thoughts? Hearing none, please call the roll. Mr. Bell? Yes. Dr. Nestbaker? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Moving on, agenda item 11.06, overnight or out-of-state field trips. Uh, may I have a motion and a second? So move. Second. This is where we uh, approve trips that some of our students and staff will be taking for educational purposes. There is one typo here. It says there will be 11 students going. I have uh, I asked that I could go, so if you will put me in as 12, I will approve this. Otherwise, I will be voting against it. They are going to, just so you know, they are going to Amsterdam, Brussels, Paris, and London. I better make it 13. I, uh, 13, okay. <laughs> okay. At no cost to the district. You might want to point that piece yeah, out. We, we do need to say yes. We do need to say that. All right. I'm sorry for throwing us down that road. Uh, any questions or comments? Hearing none, please call the roll. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Dr. Ness Baker? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Mr. Rilardo? Yes. Moving on to public comments of 12.01. We have one person signed up, Kevin Barnhart. Please come to the podium. Let me just remind you that you have five minutes to address the board in this section. Please remember to address the agenda item. Excuse me, this is for general comments, so you don't need to address an item. And a timer will be up on the screen for your benefit. Thank, Thank you for you. coming tonight. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Dr. Kellogg, President Villardo, and board members. My name is Kevin Barnhart, as you guys know. Um, I moved to Westerville probably four years ago, right? You guys are at the opposite end of the spectrum than what my wife and I are at. Two young kids, we stepped foot in 59 houses. Cabot Ray's house was number 60, and now we both call Westerville home. My, uh, with this realignment, it's a touchy subject for both the uh, naysayers and the A-boats. My next door neighbor has three kids that are fifth grade and below. Two kids go to Mark Twain, and one kid has to be transported west of State Street to attend elementary school. I don't want that to be my children. It's time for the district to realign the district as a whole. As a constituent, I ask you, the, the constituents ask you to keep your family with family, your friends with friends. By keeping children at schools that are close to their home, it will foster a classroom environment that is conductive to learning, 
to keep community friends or neighborhood friends with each other. This environment as a whole will provide a positive class environment, a positive climate, and a positive culture. So I ask that you guys, and I lobby you guys, for this realignment to take the constituents' opinions and help continue to have a positive climate and culture within the district. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barnard. Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Barnard. We really do appreciate when any members of the community come and share with us their thoughts. And I, I guess I would say that uh, we are trying to really look at this realignment process just now beginning the whole thing, just really starting to unfold it. And uh, all of us have kids in the district or have had kids and have grandkids in the district. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, she's a happy grandma too. So we are. We <laughs> I have children that are a generation removed from my own children. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Barnard, <laughs> thank you for sharing your thoughts, and this will just really be unrolling. And it's uh, we we take the charge very seriously too to all the demographics in our school system. So thank you for coming and sharing. Very important. Um, moving on to board comments 3.01. Who has anything that they would like to share? I do real quick. Um, parent prep was held this past weekend at Westerville North and it was a huge success. So kudos to the district for um, supporting this effort and putting it on. I think the parents, well, I know the parents really thought it was a uh, very more than educational. Um, I think it was a community feel coming in for it, and I think they're, I know they're excited for next year, the next possibility. So thank you for the support. I don't really hate the word grandma. I'm just not called that. <laughs> okay, just for the record. Yes, sir. that's right. We, we may want to uh, mention the uh, West Village uh, Challenge event coming up. Good, thank you. I was hoping someone else would say that. So. <laughs> well, I'm going to prompt you because you have all the details. I just know it's on my calendar. But So uh, Westerville Education Challenge was one of the supporters for Parent Prep, along with the district in Canes and Westerville Parent Council. And we were able to do so because of our one fundraiser each year, which is held at Medallion. And it's an 80s-themed party. Um, it will be held February 8th. Please come and join us if you have any 80s gear. Please wear it. It's a lot of fun. Um, and we can support, continue to support um, programs in our schools that help the social and emotional well being of our kids. So thank you. Any others? Nothing? Nothing, really. I have one. You know, we want to congratulate all the graduates, those that could be here, those that could be here. It's just really a great thing. And thank you for the staff you know, the cake and cookies and cupcakes and all that. I mean, it's, it's just above and beyond. We're very grateful for all the work that's done behind the scenes. Um, if I may say one uh, personal note I would like to give, because I know that thousands of people will watch this uh, <laughs> video out there. I would like to say happy 16th birthday to my youngest son, Stephen, <laughs> who is turning into a young man that I never imagined. And he's with his mother and his brother celebrating his birthday right at this moment. So happy birthday, Stephen. Thank you for letting me do that silliness. 4.01, the board will meet in regular session Monday, February 10, Monday, February 24, 2020, 6 p.m. right here in this room. And I would like to ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Ms. Marshall, please call the roll. Mr. Bell? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Dr. Nestbreaker? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. 721. Mm, there, there. There's no time.